We're good. Uh, hello, my name is Kyle Kermart, and I am the MAE Chief Engineer at UAB Forge. My name is Rashi Kashyap, and I'm the Project Manager for UAB Forge. So some background about our team. Uh, UAB Forge was formed in 2013 by students that were interested in participating in the competition called UAB Forge, which was organized by DARPA and SSC Atlantic. Um, the main goal of the UAB Forge competition was to design, build, and code a UAB. Uh, to perform fully autonomous missions under the time limit dictated by the competition administrators. Um, objectives of the competition included things like VTOL capabilities, performing surveillance, and obstacle avoidance. And although the competition um, itself has not been active since 2013, students at UCI continue to research uh, UABs uh, until 2017 under the new approach. So as of last year, our goal kind of shifted from being a research project to being more competition oriented. Uh, we're going to be competing uh, this year, along with last year, in the uh, AUBSI SUAS competition. Um, so this provides clear deadlines for the project and brings a new center of focus to uh, working as a team and meeting very specific deadlines for our competition. Uh, we decided to keep the name UAB Forge because we have a legacy that we're very proud of here at UCI and decided to maintain that as we move forward, although our goals have changed a bit. So our main goal for the academic year is to design and build a UAB that is successfully able to complete the challenges of the 2019 AUBSI SUAS competition, which we will attend in spring quarter. Um, I'll just go through our specific objectives really quickly. Um, number one is to complete the assembly of the kit aircraft, which is an Avastar 30cc. Um, we also plan to have our first flight test with the new aircraft uh, take off autonomously successfully locate a target using the onboard imaging system, uh, submit all necessary documents for registration in order to attain base access since the competition takes place on a naval air base, um, also land autonomously, finish the technical design paper, which is a deliverable in spring quarter for the competition, uh, successfully complete a practice mission from start to finish. Uh, so basically this is competition rehearsal for the mission demonstration portion of the competition. Uh, finish all necessary video deliverables, and finally go to competition. So this is our team schedule, which we submitted um, during week four of this quarter. Uh, it has been revised since then as of a couple of weeks ago. Our next document um, that is due is the project discovery document at the end of week nine. We plan to also submit the preliminary safety document at the end of week 10 this quarter. Um, some of our milestones that we plan for for this quarter is to complete the assembly of the kit aircraft, which we will discuss during the current progress section is almost finished. Uh, we also plan to have our first flight test with the new aircraft and finally uh, take off autonomously. Um, this is also a Gantt chart of our competition deadlines. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were keeping track of the deliverables for the competition as well as the 189 program. So our next deliverables are the personnel registration and base access documents, which are due March 4th. So uh, these are some of our requirements and specifications specifically for the UAS. That stands for an unmanned aerial system instead of just vehicle. Because it's not just a vehicle, we also have our ground system that's an integral part of the competition, as well as our flights. Um, so our maximum takeoff weight uh, needs to be under 55 pounds. Currently we're at 25.5, so that leaves us with a lot of vocal wiggle room. So we won't get anywhere near that weight limit. Um, you are also required to be walking to a single design reflected by the technical design paper. This is another deliverable that just talks about uh, what we did over the quarter, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, it must comply with the AMA model aircraft safety code. Now this has more to do with during flight guidelines, meaning that obviously you can't fly drunk, uh, you can't fly within 25 feet of people on the ground, and you need to give uh, manned aircraft priority. So these are just some general guidelines. Um, they also must have an autonomous return to home and return to land function. This means that if we lose connection uh, after 30 seconds, it must automatically return to where it took off from uh, or to land. And there also must be another safety protocol on board where after three minutes of communication loss, the aircraft must terminate flight. This unfortunately means that the aircraft crashes itself into the ground. Uh, obviously not an ideal situation, but make sure that everyone at the competition stays safe. Um, no pieces made apart from the aircraft while in flight. This is pretty obvious because if you're losing parts while in flight, uh, there's obviously a problem. Uh, the aircraft must also have autonomous flight capabilities. Uh, that's the U in UAS. Um, it must fly autonomously for three minutes to receive any points uh, for this section of the competition. Um, for ground station, they have their own requirements. Uh, there must be a display viewable by the judges that shows basic competition uh, parameters to make sure that um, we know where UAV is, as well as how it is performing during competition. 
Uh, we need to bring appropriate safety materials, making sure that anyone that works on the aircraft has proper safety gog goggles and uh, stay safe while they're working on it, as well as a fire extinguisher in case we do have a crash. Um, no objects taller than 15 feet. Uh, this would be antenna mass, but our current plan for an antenna is nowhere near that height, so we're perfectly on that requirement as well. Um, and also all radio frequency communications must, must comply with the FCC re regulations. Um, and all the hardware that we have purchased already complies with these regulations, so uh, we're covered on that front. Um, this is specifically the breakdown for the rubric of the competition. There's a technical design paper which is worth 20% of our grade. Um, there's a section that talks about our approach, talking about uh, which sections of competition we chose to actually participate in. And this is kind of doing like a grade cost analysis. Um, a system design, this talks about our individual components, how that um, helps us to compete and why we chose each component that we did. Our safety risks and mitigations, this is basically where we talk about our standard operating procedures to make sure that we know what's going on before a flight test and that we have a safe flight, um, as well as our writing style, which is just generally uh, having a good college writing level. Um, this is the next section. This is a flight readiness review presentation. This is a video that must be submitted in HD over YouTube. Uh, this outlines basically who we are and what we all individually did on the project, um, as well as a system overview of what we plan to do at competition. Um, developmental testing, so this talks about our testing progress and what our process was for the uh, UAS. And basically this just demonstrates that we're ready to compete, because I obviously don't want teams coming to competition flying all that way out there without a vehicle that's ready. Um, also, mission testing. This is where we simulate a full mission and then grade ourselves. Um, and this is the primary grading portion. It's the mission demonstration. Uh, it's worth 60% of the overall grade. Uh, there's a timeline, and there's the general uh, timeline that was provided in the rules. Uh, the autonomous flight, uh, this is just talking about the section in which we're flying autonomously and points that we potentially lost in that section. Obstacle avoidance, uh, there's going to be simulated cylinders in the air that's provided for the ground station ahead of time, and we need to be able to plot a path around those to avoid that. Object detection, classification, localization. These are going to be a foot uh, square targets that have lettering on them. We need to acknowledge where they are, what those letters are, as well as an emergent object, which in this case will be a dummy. So basically, uh, that's just to recognize a person uh, in a field. Uh, there's an airdrop portion, which is a UGV, so that's an unmanned ground vehicle. And the grade will be based off the drop accuracy and the drive to location, as well as operational excellence. Um, this will be a grading portion that basically just talks about how well would they perform as a team. Uh, so this is a little bit about our current progress. Uh, the, air, the kit aircraft that's going to be turned into an autonomous aircraft, aircraft is all but completed. There's one last push rod that needs to be replaced, and other than that, we're ready to begin our ground testing. Our aerodynamics team has learned how to process flight data, basically just to show uh, where is the aircraft in the air and any potential problems with our performance during flight tests. Avionics has their system ready, so that's ready to be mounted onto the aircraft. The EEC team has researched and purchased a URC transmitter, since we had a faulty transmitter on our last flight test. Uh, ground Station is preparing the control software mentioned earlier. Uh, the admin team has successfully registered us for the team, which is obviously uh, the first step before going to competition. And the business and marketing team is developing new marketing materials. That includes a new website that's going to be built for external users so that they can learn more about who we are, what we do, and why they should contribute to our project. So our current fall quarter budget is shown here, um, separated by teams as well as the itemized budget. These are just some of the parts that we could plan for ahead of time to purchase during this quarter. Uh, we have deviated from it slightly, but this is what we had planned initially. And then um, our future budget for uh, upcoming quarters, this is kind of a rough budget that our business and marketing team had drawn up previously as basically uh, to show potential sponsors, companies that could fund us what they would be funding us for. So that includes several parts for the EECS team, the MAE team, we plan, for example, to purchase possibly a second aircraft as a safety measure in case something happens to the current one, and the admin team, which is obviously taking up the lion's share of the budget. That's because we plan to fund everyone who's going to competition for airfare, travel, and accommodation. So our resources are our overall project advisor, as well as the MAE team faculty advisor, specifically Professor Buswell. Um, Professor QB Day is our EECS faculty advisor. He works primarily with the avionics team, but also advises the EECS team as a whole. And Professor Harris um, is the ICS faculty advisor. He primarily advises the ground station team, but again, like Professor Day, the EECS team as a whole. Our graduate student advisor is Colin Sledge. 
Um, the total units that students are enrolled in for ME 189 is 20 units, and using the estimated four hours per week per unit, um, there are 80 hours spent weekly by ME enrolled members for UAB Forge. By the end of this week, um, that means there will be an estimated 640 hours spent on UAB Forge related activities by those enrolled in 189. Um, so this is just basically an outline of uh, the team members that we have. Here you can see the administrative team as well as all the members there and as well as their respective majors. Um, and there you can see the MEE engineering team uh, with all of its respective members. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments after the questions section of this project, please feel free to email us at our respective emails there on the screen. Um, here you can see the EEC section of our team. Uh, this is led by uh, Willie Chang. And these are all of their respective majors and uh, members. So this is the team structure or subsystem breakdown. Um, essentially, there are the three team leads, which are Kyle, myself, and Willie. Um, we are in charge of, well, Kyle is the head of the MAE engineering teams, Willie is the head of the EECS engineering teams, and I'm the head of the admin teams, and then the general breakdown of the subsystems can be seen there as well. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and if there are any questions, feel free to bring those forward now. Okay. Good.